What I love so much about Revere is that it's bringing us into reverential worship of God. And it's an unrelenting vision, an unrelenting motive to get our eyes off things that are unimportant and to put our eyes on Jesus, who is worthy of such reverence and honor. And we've definitely learned that resonates with us because the fear of the Lord is something that has been on my heart for many years. And it should be for every believer because at the end of the day, it's the beginning of wisdom. And as Christians, we want to grow in wisdom. We want to grow in um, being pleasing to the Lord. So we've definitely learned that in a few areas in our life which we just want to share about. And I think one of the main ones is moving to the States. We've been here for two and a half years. We moved from Melbourne, Australia to Nashville. And it was because we felt the word of the Lord. And I remember we were so passionate, right, about both of us getting a word from the Lord to move. Yeah, so we moved at the beginning of 2020 and actually arrived in Nashville two weeks before the pandemic hit. And it was such a test of our faith because I remember the world started to shut down. We'd only been here for two weeks. And, you know, you just, you hear all these lies. The enemy tries to tell you, oh, maybe you didn't hear from the Lord. Or we actually considered, you know, do we go back in this at this moment? But it was so important that we both had received a word from the Lord um, in moving here so that we knew that this was where we were meant to be. And in the coming months, you know, we we just moved to a foreign country. We hadn't made that many new friends. Um, we had a church, but we only managed to go for three weeks before it shut down. And so we really only had each other and the Lord. And it, it was just such a testing time in, in having a confidence and knowing that God had spoken to us. And that was the word that would carry us through um, a season where, you know, there really wasn't much fruit or, or anything for that matter. And, yeah, it's... Um, it's just so important to have that word from the Lord and the obedience that comes with that. And and for us, it was so important that we obeyed um, when when He spoke. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's it's important that we both had that word because we moved on a visa for me to do songwriting, and that's how we. That was literally the way that we got to go, come to the states was on that visa, and. I remember I kind of hit the ground running and songwriting. And then, Steph, you still can't work on your visa. And, but it's been so beautiful to see in time that God has opened doors for you to do anti-human trafficking work. And in that time where you couldn't work, you could have had the option of, of believing, oh, did, it, did we hear from the Lord rightly? And was I really meant to come? And you were so confident and sure because you had heard the Lord say, go to Nashville. And even in the times where we were waiting and we, we hadn't seen the fulfillment of the promise, the word was what we stood on to keep our eyes on Jesus and to keep that confidence and assurance that God had led us at the right time. So I'm just so grateful that he spoke to both of us about it because we were so sure in our spirit that this was the right thing. And it reminds me of an, another thing in our lives that I think is so key and connected to the fear of the Lord, and that's obedience. We can never fail by saying yes to God. We can never fail or we can never misstep by obeying the Holy Spirit. And I remember I was so excited to do music. I had the dream to do it. I had the dream to do songwriting. And I was just at the end of my undergrad degree, and I was pretty much on the cusp of being free to just dive into music. And I remember the Lord saying, I don't want you to do that yet. I actually want you to do a law degree for three years. And you might not know why for the next 10 years, but I want you to obey me. And I remember being at a crossroad at that time thinking, oh my goodness, this doesn't make sense. This has nothing to do with music. This has nothing to do with what I feel you've called me to do. And it was a real test, and I believe that it was a test to see, are we going to put our dreams and the promises of God higher than even God and our, our willingness to obey Him? And I think that test, you know, because the Lord will test us. He'll test our hearts. And that was a real important test for me to, to pass because 
I think in life we have promises and we're going to see the goodness of God. We're going to see him move and what he has spoken will come to pass. But I never want the promise to come before the promise keeper. I never want not I, I never want to be in a position where I'm not willing to obey God because I'm holding so closely and tightly to the miracle that has promised me or the breakthrough that has promised me. I just need his presence. And it just resounds in my spirit when Moses said, if you don't go with us, we're not going to go. Even though God had promised them to go into the promised land, he actually gave Israel the option. You just go to the promised land. I'm going to stay here because I can't stand being with you because you're disobedient and all that. But Moses said, no, God, I don't want to go anywhere without you. Yeah. yeah, and it's really amazing because they were willing to give up walking into the promised land, which they had waited 40 years for, but they didn't want to go there without the presence of God. And that just really resonates with us because, you know, anything that we do in life, it means nothing without the presence of God. It is any success that we get or any, you know notoriety or influence or anything it means nothing without the presence of God and one more aspect about the fear of the Lord that I felt to share about is just humility it's so important that we stay in a position of humility no matter what happens no matter what accolades or success it's so important that we just stay in a position of honoring the Lord and holding him high and in honor and I'm just reminded of the Israelites. When they left Egypt, it was such a victory. And they plundered the, the, uh, the Egyptians. They took all their gold jewelry. And then soon after that, when they hadn't heard from the Lord for a little bit, they made a golden calf out of all their jewelry and all their gold. And then, you know, you know the story. Moses broke the tablets and they repented. And then after that, they actually used their gold to create all the things in the tabernacle, the, the altar of incense, the, the Ark of the Covenant, they used their treasure to create a space where God could inhabit and, and a space where he was honoured and revered. And I just think that's a choice that we have in our lives. Are we going to use the treasure of our victories to build idols that are not of God? Or are we going to consecrate them to the Lord and let God breathe on them and use them for his glory and for his purposes. So in our lives, that's our prayer, is that whatever happens, that we would give all of our crowns to the Lord and that we would give all of the glory to him because we couldn't even breathe without him, let alone do anything. And I think that's going to always keep us in a position of humility by knowing that every good thing comes from the Lord. Every good thing is for the Lord. So be encouraged in that today.